like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. I'll worship Your holy name. Strength is failing, the end draws near, and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. Good morning. Welcome to Twickenham. We're glad you're here this morning. Uh, if you could uh, let us know about your attendance, uh, either via through uh, electronically through the email uh, that you received this morning, if you're a member or on the card in front of you so we could have a record of your attendance, we would appreciate that. Uh, here at Twickenham, we're striving to be a missional church. Jesus says and even prays on the Sermon on the Mount in uh, Matthew 6, 10. He says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As a young child of 12, uh, Jesus uh, told his mom and dad when they were looking for him uh, three days in the city of Jerusalem after they had already departed home for Nazareth, uh, he says, hey, didn't you know I really needed to be about my father's business? So we want to do the will of God, and we want to be about our father's business, and the Hacienda of Hope is one way we can do that. Uh, this uh, refuge, this shelter in Ecuador is an aim to allow children to be rescued. Same children that are roughly Jesus' age when he was in the temple uh, at age 12, uh, answering a lot of questions to the uh, teachers of the law. And as we have an aim and a hope and a prayer to uh, rescue children and the people of Ecuador, the reality is we're all in need of rescue. Each and every one of us. And that's really why we're here this morning is to seek the salvation and the rescue that comes from God, but also to rejoice in our salvation and rescue that comes from God. I'll end and, and greet you with Psalm 9, uh, verses 9 and 14. King David tells us, Yahweh is a shelter for the oppressed, or a hacienda for the oppressed. And he asks us, he pleads, he says, save me. So I may praise your name publicly at Jerusalem's gates so I can rejoice that you have rescued me. So let's continue our rejoicing that God has rescued us. Thank you for being here. Let's stand. Our heart, our desire is to see the nations worship. Our pride, our prayer is to sing your praise to the ends of the earth.
Psalm 103 is, is part of our prayer. David set a masterful example of, of praise and worship there. And he also puts in perspective who God is and who we are in relation to him. So if you would, let's bow. Praise the Lord, O my soul. 
All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, and who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone and its place remembers no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who, who do his bidding, who, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works, everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Father, thank you for these words from David. Thank you that uh, he understands and communicates to us that you and you alone are God and that uh, you look out for us in so many ways. Thank you for your love that surpasses all understanding. Father, at this time we're mindful of many people of our congregation that are hurting or, or suffering and we ask a special prayer for healing and and recovery. This time we remember Jewel May, Jim Montgomery, Brian Kuntz, Jane Smith, Brian Price, and Megan White. Father, these and so many others are, are looking to you for answers, and we ask that you'll give them a special measure of encouragement and, and uh, understanding and peace. Father, at this time, as we consider the work in Ecuador, we're also mindful of uh, your servants, Justin and John O'Rieger, and Jake and Tanya. Father, they have uh, set a good example of stepping out in faith and uh, committed their lives to, to service, service for children. And Father, we just ask that that their example will, will help us to recognize where we can grow in faith and where we can step out in service. Father, I also ask that you a prayer of blessing on Jerry and Pat Snyder, who so many years ago stepped out when, when there was nothing in this, uh, at the Hacienda of Hope in this work, and they had this vision and uh, helped us to get started there. Father, I'm especially mindful of them and their son, Travis, as he's struggling with cancer. And uh, we pray that his treatments will go well and that you'll give him quick and full recovery. Father, again, we ask you to, to help us as we seek to grow our faith as we see, strive to, to lean on you, to, to trust in your word and your promises. Thank you for your mercy and your goodness, and thank you for the law of the spirit of life. And it's through Jesus we pray, amen.
Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it's not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to the death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by Him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. Let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. Let the blind say I can see. It's what the Lord has done to me. Let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. Let the blind say I can see. It's what the Lord has done to me. supernatural thriller film, The Sixth Sense, starring Bruce Willis as Dr. Malcolm Crow. The movie has a story of a young boy who has a sixth sense, and which he finally reveals that to Dr. Crow, a child psychologist who's trying to help him. And he tells him, I see dead people. And he kind of questions him. He says, he says, no, they're walking around just like regular people. They don't even know they're dead. They see what they want to see. He says, I see them all the time. They're everywhere. 
The twist at the end of the movie is that the audience has been led to believe that Dr. Crow, who got shot early in the film, apparently recovered and is alive helping this young boy, but in fact, he's dead. And you know, the audience, you say, how can that be? I watched the movie. I saw it unfold. He was alive and interacting in the world. And yet, as they let the character Dr. Crow understand what's happened, he rewinds his recent history, of course, for the audience also, and looks at those scenes and realizes and understands he really was dead. And in fact, he understands how he's misrepresented the situations to believe that he was actually alive. I want to use that movie plot this morning to kind of open our eyes to the relevance of this story to us today. As Christians, you know, we're really expected to have that sixth sense. I think we're supposed to look at the world in a different way. And the world, through Satan's urging, has viewed the world very differently. And it's had a lot of worldly things that has essentially made the essence of life. Whether it be fame, wealth, beauty, food, alcohol, sex, material goods, business success, on and on, of the many things that we now, through the world, say these are important. They're worthy of respect. They're worthy of praise. And most importantly, they're worthy of your time. But Christ came to this world to turn our perspectives upside down. Right? The first will be last. The last will be first. How crazy does that sound to the world? It's nuts. We need to view the world like the young boy in Sixth Sense. We need to be able to view those around us and see dead people. That is dead in Christ. Just like in the movie, we have people in our lives every day that we should see as dead. And just like in that movie, all those people believe they are alive. We need to see them in Christ's view as dead people and be prepared to show them what living is all about. What abundant living is all about. And sometimes I'm a little concerned that we don't believe that fact ourselves. So we're working and living with Bruce Willis characters every day. They think they're alive, but Christ has given us this sixth sense, the truthful and spiritual view of Christ and eternity. In the movie, the young boy is afraid of his ability, understandably, and it can be scary and intimidating for us even to know what to do with that knowledge. We need to live out Christ in everything we do with his view of the world. We demonstrate our lives with true living, what true living looks like, and are always prepared to share that view with others. We are the path to rescue. Whether it be those we work with, go to school with, children in the inner city, abandoned children of Ecuador, we are the path to rescue. Christ came into the world to serve, not to be served, and that is our example. Christ is our redeemer and rescuer, and we are his body now that he has ascended. We are now the rescuers. Would you bow with me? Our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for your Son. We're grateful for this opportunity to think about what he came here to do. He came here to show us the Father, to show us you, to give us a different view of the world. Help us to be more mindful of what that view really is. Help us to be less entangled in this world and the world view of what's important. Help us to have a view of eternity. We're grateful for your son and the great example he gave us of what this life's about, to try to give us a different perspective. And to do all that, he was willing to go so far as to, to give his life so that our sins could be forgiven because we just can't do it right. We're grateful for this bread that represents his body that he so willingly and you so willingly let go to the cross. Help us to be mindful of him and his view of the world. In Christ, name we pray. Amen.
People need the Lord. People need the Lord. At the end of broken dreams, He's the open door. People need. Father, we're so grateful for this fruit of the vine that represents the blood that was shed on that cross, was shed in beatings, all for us, all to be able to rescue us from our sins. We can't be more grateful. But there's too many that don't understand that path of rescue. And we need to be able to share it. Help us to have a mind at all times to look for those that need the rescue. Those that are dead. Those that think they're alive, but they're not. They don't understand the real view of your son in eternity. Help us to keep that view ourselves and to share it with everyone around us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. People need the Lord. People need the Lord. At the end of broken dreams, He's the open door. People.
I thought it was really cool how that song kind of meshed with the next one that we're going to sing, sing called Beautiful Things, about taking those broken things and God making them beautiful again. I was thinking about the budget presentation last week and about how much easier it was to visualize the beautiful things that God's doing through pictures, right, instead of through numbers. And I thought that was a real blessing. And as I consider Ecuador, I think of all the beautiful things that are going on down there because our act of giving is number one a beautiful thing. When we sacrifice, when we give, that's a beautiful sight. But then secondly, what happens with what we give does beautiful things, right? And that's a great honor to God because of the ways that he's blessed us. I hope that you'll consider that as we take our off offering this morning. You make beautiful things all this pain I wonder if I'll ever find my way I wonder if my life could really change at all All this earth Could all that is lost ever be found Could a garden come Grace and mercy 
to your radiance. By the blood I may enter your brightness. Search me, try me, consume all my darkness. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. afraid. <laughs> it was my first time I get out from my family and I left everybody else behind. In my family we are, mm, we are 10 and we didn't have like the biases, basic things to like to leave. Sometimes we didn't have uh, something to eat. I remember that sometimes we have to like go out and look for food in, in the trash. And even me have to maybe stop eating because I have to give my food to my little brothers and sisters, even though I was still a kid. Praise be to God our Father and to his Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My goal today, among other things, is not to detract from what Christian has to share with us. This young man is an amazing, an amazing young man. Those of you who, who know him know exactly what I'm talking about. If you haven't met him personally, you've heard stories about him through the years. I can remember a long time ago, when he was only about 10 years old, Jerry coming up and talking about the wonderful prayers that this young man would lead. lead. He had such a spiritual depth uh, even then. And so today, you, you've heard a little bit about his story, and you're going to hear some more uh, in just a few minutes. I appreciate John and the prayer that, that he led a few minutes ago, and uh, especially looking back to the heritage of, of this project thinking back to the days when uh, Jerry and Pat launched out on faith. And I understand that there's, there's a lot in our assembly this morning that probably don't know much about the history of the project. And uh, we need to catch you up sometime. But Pat and Jerry uh, went down there. This, this is a church that just has a passion for kids. They have a great children's ministry, a great youth ministry. You know, what Art and his team are, are doing with, with inner city uh, children is, is a part of the passion of this church and what it, what, and its outreach for, for young people, for children. And it's been that way for a long time. And that's really what God laid on our hearts um, that brought about this, uh, this chance to, to go to Ecuador and to work with the project there. We were, God, through his providence, uh, brought the Perrys uh, from Washington. I'm feeding back, aren't I? <laughs> Is there anything I can do about that? Um, okay, here we go. This is a little bit better. Um, 
but the Perrys came down and they had already, they had been with a church in Bellevue that, uh, that, that had a project already going on in the mountains of Ecuador. And they were so excited about what, what was happening there. And um, so uh, they, they suggested that we take a look at that piece of property and, and we did and, and just fell in love with that mountain and just saw great potential uh, that, uh, that was right there uh, with an easy grass. And Jerry did take a barren hillside and turn it into a beautiful home. You know, but Jerry's skills were a little bit limited when it came to childcare. His experience was in uh, farming and management of a, of a mall. But he raised four good, good sons, and it felt like that would be a good, good place to start. But there came a time when, in God's time, when we saw that the need was for people who had a, a background in child care and really understood how to deal with broken children. And we're all broken, but a lot of these kids come from situations like Christian just described that it's hard for us to, to really understand. And Christian, in a sense, really was one of the lucky ones. Uh, these, uh, J um, Justin uh, Rieger and uh, a good friend of ours, Jean Villarreal, who is a, um, a, a phenomenal photographer from Fort Worth, te Texas, sat down with some of the kids and shot the video that you're looking at. And then they, they sent me just mountains of video that would go through and we'd pull out little clips that, to, to say something that we felt like would be meaningful to you. And that was one of the, the clips. But, Christian went on to say that he remembered in those before he came to the Hacienda what his family was like there. Uh, you know, he did, did have these siblings that, that did care for one another and they really loved each other. And, and it, it, he was in a sense really one of the lucky ones. We've got kids in our project that, that are also children of abuse that we can hardly imagine. And so having people in that project that have the skills to bring about healing is a very important thing. You know, I've taken a, a stroll down memory lane this week. Sherry uh, Krigger, your dad, uh, helped, me put, helped put me on that path. Uh, he, he sent me an email this past week and said, I'd like to get a picture of your dad. And he said, you know, I, I blog. Now, Sherry, I never would have pegged your dad as a blogger. Uh, <laughs> anybody who knows Noel Talon, that, you know, you, CPA, uh, you know, he, he established my stereotype of, of what a CPA is. <laughs> but so I, I, I scanned a picture of my dad and I sent it to him and he explained to me what he was going to do. And, and he, he did, he had a video, uh, not a video clip, but an audio clip of, of West Huntsville's chorus and uh, my dad was doing a recitation uh, in, in that clip. And, you know, as I'd listen to it, you know, I'd just be flooded with these memories. You know, 10 years and 10 months ago, my dad passed away. You know, he's a preacher and he had a tremendous impact on my life, not just my life, a lot of your lives, folks sitting here in this audience this morning. But, you know, back in, in that day, in my dad's generation, we had things called gospel meetings. Let me explain to some of you young folks what a gospel meeting was. I mean, these things would go on sometimes a week, over a week. By the time I got a little older, it was weekend, then, you know, adulthood, they kind of vanished, went by the wayside. But I can remember going with my dad to gospel meetings, me and my sister, and and some of them would be uh, in tents, kind of out in the middle of nowhere. And uh, preachers in that day, th these were evangelistic events, and they would pull out, uh, you know, their best stuff. And one of my dad's was five minutes after death. Well, you can just imagine what that sermon would have been like. Five minutes after death. You think you're all right now, you're, you can eat, drink, and be happy, but five minutes after death, what will your reality be? And I mean, he could paint a picture. I could smell the brimstone. 
I could feel the heat. And sure enough, by the time that invitation was sung, either me or my sister was itching to walk down the aisle to just make sure we'd gotten forgiveness of the sins that we'd committed since the last time we'd asked for for forgiveness of sins. But you know, there is a place for us to kind of remember that each of us have been in that state of, of, of being lost. I think it's a beautiful thing in a sense that, that I'm, a, I'm a grace-oriented person. And I know that, that, that we, can, we can take grace to such an extreme that, that we just feel like I can just do anything and God's just going to forgive. Uh, I've got a free pass just because of God's grace. I don't, I don't think that's what it is at all. I, th- I think we need that constant reminder. or It just needs to linger somewhere in our minds that we've been in a lost state, that we've been in need of a redeemer, we've been in need of rescue, and I appreciate these guys pulling that theme in in the comments this morning. We use the words Lord and Savior. Savior. Jesus is our Savior. He's rescued us. I've grown to the point in my spiritual life, and I'm sure a lot of you have as well, where you're so comfortable in that, that you can lay in your bed at night and in the darkness and the solitude of the moment, just close your eyes and speak to God. I love to speak to God when I'm driving alone in my car. I just want to talk to my Father. I love those intimate moments. I love being drawn closer to it. I love being able to share in words, thoughts, and feelings that I know that he, has, he already knows because he, he, he hears them before they can ever pass over my lips. He is my Savior. The passage that we read this morning is such an important one. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit, who gives life, has set you free from the law of sin and death. We needed rescue, and he provided rescue. On down in that passage, I'm going to pick it up at about verse 14. He chooses these words. He says, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry. What's that word? Abba. Why does he use that one instead of just Father? That word Abba is very intimate. It's very close. Go back in your mind. Those of us who are older, all of us, to to a moment in life that you remember being held in your father's arms. Those memories really did come flooding back to me this year, this week. As I sat down with my mom the other day and played for her that clip. It was amazing just to see the look in her face. It's almost like my dad's presence was there again. I could feel his presence. Feel that warmth. See, you and I, we feel the warmth of God's presence. I hope you feel it right now. I have, but I know that there, there are moments in our lives when when we're just almost overwhelmed with it, when something happens that, that we just don't understand, that we can't, we can't handle by ourselves and we need, 
we need something bigger than us, we're overwhelmed with his presence. The times you feel closest to God, the times you quite often feel the greatest spiritual high is when life, it seems like, is hitting you with its deepest lows. God's presence is there. And by him we cry, Daddy. Cry, Daddy. Daddy, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs. Heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. You know, I hope that for each of us, the Hacienda of Hope can serve as a metaphor for our spiritual lives. Because we can see in reality how God is working in the lives of these children to bring them out of abuse, to bring them out of abject poverty, to bring them out of neglect into the arms of someone who loves them, someone who can give them boundaries, someone who can teach them about the glorious love of God and to establish that God has a plan for them, that there is really meaning for their lives. See, God does that for each one of us. We can't take it for granted. We cannot become so comfortable in God's grace that we forget that we needed a Savior. Christian has much more to share with us. The next thing that he's going to share is the impact that the project that you support has had on his life. Everything we do in this life, this earth, has an echo in eternity. And I think that if we want to have a good echo in eternity, uh, here is a good idea uh, here at the Hacienda because uh, God is here, He's everywhere, and you can feel it, and you can see Him here at the Hacienda. The houses, the mountain, the place, and also in, in, the, in the kids, every, every children that is here. And you can be close to God and your life can change and you can change life also here at the Hacienda. So even before the budget video, I had decided not to, to break from my engineering heritage and, and not give you charts with bullets on them, at least not entirely. So I'm gonna talk about what we've done this last year and the progress we've made while you see some slides go through and, and you see some pictures of kids and so forth, uh, and then talk a little bit about our goals for 2015. So the children are growing and progressing. I, I, you know, Tim and I just went down in December. They're happy. Things are going very well. They've improved their their school work overall because we changed some of the curriculum and that was good for some of these kids. Uh, counselor is there and available on a regular basis helping uh, not only with the children but with helping with the house parents so they can understand how to deal with situations. Uh, we've still had other situations. We, we, we have our eyes open for those times at which kids need some additional counseling and now we're prepared and we have person available and we're ready to do it whenever needed. Uh, we've been involved the kids in other things. You see there, last year it was karate, um, soccer, now they're doing swimming. You know, just to have some things like normal kids that get out and have something other than just being right stuck on the campus. Not a bad place, but you know, a little more extracurricular activities. But also, from a spiritual standpoint, 
We're trying to teach them other things. And you're going to see we've involved them in activities where they're serving others. You know, we don't want them sitting there thinking we're just to serve them, these poor kids that, that need our help. They're learning what God's will is for us and what the purpose is in their life to reach out and help other people. They're even worse off than they are and need their help. So we're doing that. And I think one of the best examples that you're going to see a little more of is Christian. Uh, our oldest is finally going to come out and get out into the world. Our child care facility relationship with the government and the child protection services down there is outstanding. You know, I'm telling you, a little over 18 months ago, there was talk about shutting us down. You know, some threats, maybe veiled threats, but threats nonetheless. And recently, they actually did shut down a facility. It was in some government facilities being run by an organization that wasn't managed well, and they shut them down. It was quite a ways away. But that organization came to the Riegers to ask for advice on operating that facility and potentially ask for some additional training. I'm telling you folks, when you go from not enough trust to not sure they even want to let you run this house to the point that they would come and say, hey, we, we gotta start running this on our own. We need your help and your advice. My goodness, God is good and he can work through his people to help his mission. And this is his mission. The family investigations are still ongoing. We can't find some of the parents and so forth, but we're still having to do that for the purpose of the Child Protection Services. We have found a couple of family members, by the way, just to let you know that we didn't know existed. And one of those child may go back to their family, to an uncle, this summer. Uh, now, we've checked that all out, you know, but putting kids back with their family is the right answer. We've also found that maybe some of the other siblings that weren't brought should be there. So there may be some changes coming up in terms of additional children, uh, and we're going to let God work through that, right? We're going to let the, the Riggers work through and do the investigations and know what's right. We had another placement that came uh, from the Child Protection Services. We investigated. The kids are poor, yeah, and yes, but they're going to school, and they're getting fed, and there's an older daughter in that family that's actually holding that family unit together, and that's the right thing for those kids. But we're going to continue monitoring that to see if things change and be prepared to, to place them in the home if necessary. We also had, just so you know, Lynn Harms, who runs the Lubbock Children's Home and is actually has oversight of another home down in Texas. Uh, he knows the Riggers. He comes from their church, has a good relationship, but he is an expert. And for only plane tickets to send him down or using his own time, he has gone down and done an assessment. And so I feel very good. His report is very good, has a few things that we could improve, but for the most part, we have rock solid services and a child care facility with all the procedures that we need to do what needs to be done for these kids. And I'm, I'm so great, grateful for him for doing that and helping us. The academy, you know, we changed the curriculum from the self-paced to more of a traditional classroom. I think, you know, the self-paced is great if you've got motivated kids. Ecuador is kind of like here. We don't have as many motivated kids, so we've moved away from that. Some of the older ones are still doing it, and I think that's helped. Still a lot of focus on English. I will say of the six that graduated last summer, you probably heard this before, they all got accepted by the universities. So we're doing a good job. Uh, Jason DeFrancis is now down there. You see him on the screen, and <clears throat> he's doing a great job. You know, we helped support him to get through the Quito School of, of, of Biblical Studies and then come up there and help. You know, that's Kathy's husband. And he's just energetic. He's great. He's great with kids. He's helping with the congregation also and the, and the youth in the congregation and outreach to the community besides helping in the school uh, with all their chapels and so forth. Facilities. You see the pictures there. You know, we did some school modifications to support the classrooms. We also outfitted the apartment. Some of the folks have stayed there. It's very nice for small groups. Um, we also better outfitted the home. Some of those pictures you saw had couches and some things that we didn't have that really made it more livable for the kids. The director's home is, is nearing completion, I hope in the next, I think Jonna hopes more than me, in the next couple of months. Uh, and it's gonna be a great place to be hospitable to the groups and have do uh, devotions with the kids with a great open area. We had a band you just saw go by, uh, additional funds. Transportation is a struggle down there and keeping cars around. But we have a great team. Uh, the set of directors that we have are working together so closely. You see Kathy and Jason there. Uh, I'm telling you, it is a close-knit group. They are working together, and, and they're doing phenomenal things. And I'm, I'm really happy with, with the team and the staff that we have down there now. Working with child care, the academy, the congregation there in terms of working with the church, and then with the interns and, and so forth that's going on. So we're just so pleased at what's going on down there. God's hand is very obvious. Um, 
So for 2015, a lot of it is keep, keep on going, right? I mean, we've, we've had some great improvements and progress, and we want to maintain that level of child care uh, facility processes and procedures, and we want to keep that going and improve where we need to. Uh, we are adding more of, of uh, family services to be able to do the investigations. You have to have somebody out doing that and monitoring some of these families to see if they can improve uh, to help the children get back in their homes. So there's some of that going on, but we will have also others. As an intern, Stephanie uh, Brookshire from Texas went down as an intern. Now she's finished her social degree, and she's going to go down there and spend a, a year and help. Uh, now that she's got her degree, still working on a master's remotely. Um, but we will be reaching out more from a family perspective of children that are in homes and deciding whether or not to place them as the child protection services bring us more cases that we need to investigate. Uh, we want to continue to build on that extra, excellent relationship that we have with the child protection services and I think it's, it's just so amazing how that's changed and I think it'll only get better. Um, as we complete that director home by the way, you know, we all know that the Riggers are living in one of those homes. We have some capacity now but that'll be opening up another home, another children's home. We're prepared this year, uh, if midway through the year or something, we have enough children that we need to add another uh, set of house parents and, or more relief parents, we will be able to do that with the funding that we've identified. Uh, but we are prepared to investigate other cases that the Child Protection Services bring, and I think there's a good chance that we can add children this year. Mm. You know, we've been working very hard. We just kind of stopped, right, when we had issues sometime back, and we've been working very hard to make sure we had a solid foundation which when we brought kids in, they got the care they needed, and we're there. And now I'm ready for, you know, for God to bring more children. I pray that you'll, that you'll be in prayer with us, that God can open our eyes and, and bring those children to us so that we're prepared to do that. We can do a good job with that. Uh, we want to increase the school enrollment. With the, with the change to the traditional classes and the changes we did, uh, some facility mods and so forth, uh, Jake believes he can, he can have quite a few more children. So we want to increase that so we can have greater outreach to the community. Uh, and to the, to the uh, families that are in that area. And we're starting to plan for, for children transition. You know, uh, we're starting to see the first one that's going to come out and what he's going to do with his future. And we're going to start seeing how well a foundation we laid there in terms of what he's going to do with his life. And they're going to have different ideas of what they do. Uh, but we've got to start planning for that because next year there'll be four in 2016 that will graduate. Uh, and they have different plans of what they want to do, but we're going to start working our way towards that. So, what do we need for this year? We need $200,000. And if you're interested in all the breakout, there it is, and we can talk more about it. I, trust me, i got spreadsheets that you wouldn't want to look at. But uh, that's, that's the number. And most of this is really maintaining what we're doing with some expect, expectation that we're going to add some children and potentially house parents. Uh, you'll also see some vehicle funds. I mean, keeping the vehicles uh, running down there, if you've been up and down that road, just up and down the hills, enough to beat a, beat a car to death. So we're going to continue to have to look at, at keeping funds for vehicles and so forth. But other than that, a lot of this is just running uh, a normal operation. You see some of our partners there. The Gate, Decatur Church of Christ in Texas has been a great partner and continue to be a great partner. Uh, we continue to get funds from the Hacienda of Hope Foundation. Uh, and then, of course, Broadway, White House, Woodland West, Southside, and some others that, that actually are being very good partners and growing in what they're providing to the, to, the, uh, to the Hacienda. So you can see that they're, they're providing over $150,000 of the total uh, cost for the operation. If you go to the next chart. So just a reminder, March 1st, you know, we tried, started doing this presentation early so that you knew what was needed, you, you knew what we were about, and made sure that you had some time to think about how blessed you are, to think about the need and to see the vision that we have for the Hacienda. The goal of 200000 reminder, it's above the weekly budget, so uh, besides what you normally give, this is above that. Uh, so please be mindful of that. And of course, we will send out a, a pledge card again, I think, if you've been here before, but if you've not, we'll send a pledge card because, you know, you can't give all that money in one day, so uh, a lot of us will give some money that day and, and, and pledge throughout the year. Uh, at different times or at the end of the year, whatever works best for you. Obviously, we're open to that, but whatever you give from January, if you give monthly, some people do, January through December, uh, put on that card and, and, and identify it for the pledge so we know what funds we're, we're using for 2015. Next chart. So 
it's about the kids, and we're trying to do the right thing by them. I think we've, I think they're doing well. I think they're progressing, and I think we're on track for our children coming out to be able to make an impact in the world. You know, when we had some issues in the past, you know, it was like, hey, how long have you been doing this? Man, we've been doing this 10 years. And, you know, the response I get back is like, oh, so this is a young mission. You know, I, it feels old, you know, doesn't it? But it's not. Think about it. 10 years is all we've been down there. This is a mission that's going to go on for decades. We finally got one child coming out, and we hope to add a lot more ch children because we have the capacity and we want to use the facilities that we've done. But, man, through the Snyders and now the Riegers and the Wilsons, we have built a facility, and we are starting to put rock-solid foundation in place to be able to have a solid school and solid child care facility, and that's where we're at, and we're ready to start using it and getting more children in there. But the vision is not just about having that campus and having those children and having, you know, it's about changing Ecuador. It's about changing South America. And we want these kids to come out disciples. We want them to have the right view of the world, the eternity view of the world, and I think we're doing that. And I think what we're going to see is it's not about that campus, it's about the kids when they leave that campus mm -hmm. and go out into the world and they start sharing that view with those around them, because I think they will. I think we've trained them to do that, and you're going to see that with our first one that goes out. You're going to see it probably more than you will recognize it in some of the others because of what he wants to do with his life. That's the vision. It continues to be the vision. We may be a young mission, but I'm telling you, years and years and decades from now, we'll be gone, and there will be children going through this facility and going out into the world, and we will see a change in Ecuador and South America. I think this is something that really God really wants me to do because even though I say no the first time to aim in Brazil, he opened that door again and then, well, I really thought about it and I prayed it and I say, well, if this something that God wants me to do, I will do it because I want to do His will. So uh, I only have one month left here in the Hacienda and going to be gone for eight months down in Brazil and going to be studying for do mission work. I'm going to be preparing myself. And after the eight months, I'm going to be gone also for 14 more months, going to be going maybe to any country down in South America to do mission work and to, uh, you know, just do what I have learned in all the eight months that have been in, in Brazil. So it's, I think it's going to be fun and I'm going to enjoy it. And uh, the, more, the best of all, I'm going to be doing what I like to do, that is working for God. Isn't that awesome that a kid that, right? Here's a kid that 10 years ago we, we became attached to, had no idea where he was going, and he's going to Brazil to do mission work. That is just awesome, y'all. Good stuff, and I hope that you'll keep March the 1st in mind as we work towards uh, our annual Hacienda contribution. Isn't it great to have great things to give to? Amen. Wow, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling love. And by the way, here's another one as we close with some things that you need to know about. The Huntsville Inner City Learning Center. That's the organization that Art Leslie preached a couple weeks ago and talked about. Is having their second annual fundraising dinner celebrating 10 years of being awesome on February the 19th from 6 to 9 at the Roundhouse Museum. And there's all kinds of activities and stuff. That's all in your bulletin. But I know that they need your support. So please, if you can, help support the Learning Center in that way. Easter Chorus Practice resumes today from 1 to 2 down at the end of the hallway in room 205 as we work towards our Easter service this year. TCM Lock-In is second through fifth graders. Mark your calendars now. There is an error in your bulletin. It says that it starts at 4 o'clock, parents, but it really starts at 5. So please note it starts at 5 o'clock on 
um, that day, February the 13th. Jobs for Life Rally is at Twickenham. This will be uh, a Jobs for Life Rally in the Fellowship Hall on Monday, Monday, February the 23rd. The program begins at 6. They'll have praise, fellowship, testimonies, and remarks by JFL CEO David Spickard. So uh, please join them. Let them know if you can come and be a part of that. You can contact Ken Smith or Clark Anderson. Uh, Open Mic Night is Friday, February 27th at 7. That's in the Mercy Building. Check with Dave Stewart. And don't forget the spring tonight. Our instrumental praise and worship service is at 5 o'clock. We'll be focusing on love with Valentine's Day nearing. It'll be great. Please come back and, and join us for that. And a quick word from the shepherds about another upcoming event. After the last uh, elders were installed, not really sure how many years that's been, uh, something like nine years ago, uh, we had ten men who were serving this congregation. Over the past uh, six or seven years, that number has dwindled to five. Uh, and so we, the current elders, are, are confident, and I'm sure most of you are way beyond confident, that we need to get some more men to serve as elders. Uh, and so that process is beginning. Uh, out in the lobbies, you'll find a, a two-sided sheet of paper that's, a, that's an elder nomination form. You can also get this off the web if you want to print it out. Uh, on the front side of that form are sort of the qualifications. On the back side are the uh, plans and the nomination form. Uh, basically, you've got from now until March 8th to pick up this form to go find the person that you want to nominate or people that you want to nominate. Uh, talk to them and make sure they're willing. Uh, fill out on this side, it asks you to, to tell, tell everybody why you think that person is qualified. But the nomination forms will be collected from now through March 8th. Uh, the elders will interview those candidates and then uh, a list of men will be proposed to the congregation and you will have a chance to vote on that with the goal of uh, new elders being appointed on May 31st. So please be in prayer about this. Please give it your, uh, a real priority in what you're planning and what you're doing. Uh, we want to hear from you. Thank you. And lastly, if you have a need this morning, our elders will be available right outside these doors to my right to uh, talk with, pray with, or counsel with for anything you might need as we stand and sing one more chorus and then close in prayer. Let's stand. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord. Dear God, we thank you for the opportunity to be able to rescue people in Ecuador. But we ask that you would help us to rescue people here and to keep in mind that you've rescued us. And if you haven't rescued us, that we're all in need of being rescued. We ask that you would help us to be a church that is truly alive and not like the church in Sardis that was supposedly alive but was really dead. And we ask that you would help each one of us to be truly alive to you, to listen to you, to what we need to do to further rescue, to present ourselves more rescued to you and the things that we can do to rescue the people around us. But also help us to keep in mind the things that we can do to, to give up ourselves, to be able to provide for the Hacienda of Hope and for the other missions that we do here to dig deep into our own pockets for things that we don't really need and put that money aside for you and to help us to 
to do those kinds of things and be in prayer for that. We'd ask also that you would be with the elders as they select new men to be serving with them and be with the congregation as they select men and present them to be prayerful about this and to help them to select the men you have already prepared and to help them to be mesh well with the current elders in the congregation to lead this congregation into the future. We thank you for everything you've done for us, Lord, and we ask your blessings on us as we go out into the world and worship you in the world each day, just as we have worshiped you corporately here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.